Welcome back folks. So what we have today, I just got in this uh, Siglent instrument here. You know, this is not a brand new to me instrument, it is a brand new instrument. But uh, I've had uh, one of these before and it had a bit of a problem. And I uh, contacted the good folks down at RCC Electronics and they said, well, ship us back the bad one, we'll ship you a brand new one. And they did. And here it is. What it is, is the uh, Siglent DC load. What happened to the old one? I'll, I'll put a, an image up to show you. You can see that the, the screen had gone kind of uh, got quite lines, both vertical and horizontal, running through it, and um, kind of messed up the display a little. It was very difficult to see. So that's all that went wrong with it. There was no problems at all with the way the thing worked. And uh, they immediately shipped me a, a brand new one. So. That I can't say enough about those guys down there. They're great, and their prices are always the, the lowest. And they ship anything like this; they'll ship out for free uh, if you buy one. And if you have a problem, they really uh, deal well with you. I'm going to pull this off to one side here, pull it out. SCL1020XE 200 watt DC electronic load. So we're going to do a couple of things with it today. We're going to take these very nice knurled knobs or fluted knobs, fluted knobs. We're going to take these off it. And we're going to replace them with these. These here, I got these off of AliExpress, and what they do is they'll thread onto the six millimeter studs here and allow you to put a four millimeter banana plug in there for you know if you got something that is not a very high load and you want to connect it up easy enough. Um, just just having these alone there means you got to get some sort of spade lug in there, and yeah, this makes it a little bit easier just to hook something up quickly. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set it up, put it into position, give it an IP address, and then we're going to turn this into an SEL1030X. So what we'll be able to do is be able to run it at uh, a higher power rating, up to 300 watts, and we're also going to get um, an extra digit of precision in, in the display. A lot of people call that a hack, but in this case, I don't think it's not so much a hack because we're just going to use commands that are built into the system to do this. Like there's nothing, you don't have to change components or load in different firmware or anything of that nature. We just issue a few commands and this obligingly becomes an SCL 1030X. And so that's what we're going to show you how to do that today. So let me get this up in place and give it an IP address. I usually take the off these things because they fit better on the bench. So I'm gonna do that too. All right, I'll come back and we'll get a shot of the screen of this thing and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, here it is all set up. <clears throat> like you see here, it's only got uh, three digits on the voltage and three digits on the current there. And we're in the power setting mode here. So let's, uh, let's try and get it up to 300 watts. So put in 300. And it won't go. I mean, the best it'll do is 200. So if you do uh, 100 here, do the 100, go up to 199, do 199, 201, and it won't do it. So it maxes out at 200 there. And so let's uh, now set up. Uh, Upstairs in my office, I'll connect to this uh, via the LAN and uh, use the built-in SCPI commands uh, to improve the situation. Okay, what I'm going to use here is a TerraTerm. 
and I'm going to connect up to my signal load, DC load. I'm going to new connection. I'm going to TCP IP. That's the IP address that I have it at. We want to set up a telnet session and we want to go in on port 5025. And say OK. Now, as far as the way the terminal needs to be set up, you're going to need to set up, uh, you want to have local echo. On the receive side, you want to set this to auto so that it, it will look nice on the display. Now, just to see if we're hooked up or not, we can issue this command. And we are indeed hooked up. So it says Signal Technologies. It's an SCL 1020XE. And it's got some other useful information there. So next we want to issue this command. So what this does here is it changes uh, the product ID to one, and that will set the display position to four digits rather than just the three digits that are there. Next we issue this command. This will set the power to 300 watts. And finally, we, we issue this command. Now, this one's totally unnecessary. By the time we've issued these two commands here, we already have it at, it at the functionality of an SDL 1030X. But this just tells the system to store that so that if you do the asterisk IDN command, or if you go to the front screen of the machine itself and go in for the system info, it'll report that it is an SDL 1030X rather than an SDL 1020XE. So it's just, it's just for cosmetic reasons. And there we go. Now we just have to recycle the device. So now we just power the machine down and power it back on. Okay, now we can go in here to utility, go into system, system info. Now you can see it is reporting as an SCL 1030X. And we see now we have four digits of precision on both the current and the amperage. And if we go over here to Watts and we want to enter in 229 we can. In fact, we can go all the way up to 300. So that's it. I don't think I'm ever going to need uh, 300 watts, but if I do, I, I have it there. But it's, it's nice to have the additional digits of precision up on the screen. So that's it, folks. Uh, like I say, it's hardly a hack if they supply you with the commands to be able to do this. So if you have one of these loads and you want to update it to uh, the SCL 1030X, specification. That's how you do it. All right. Thanks for being with me today, guys. Uh, appreciate it. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.